Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 44 of Bell the Bell with Bobby Blaze. I am your host, Professor Jeremy Vollmer, and joining us now, the star of the show, Bobby fucking Blaze. What's happening, Bobby? Oh, man, I'm working on about two hours of sleep, Jeremy, and it's good to be back, though, but I'm feeling a little bit ugly and I feel a little bit useless, but you know what? I know I'm not. I know I'm beautiful, mm-hmm. and I know I'm productive because we're going to put out another great podcast on a Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze podcast. So I hope the professor's got his thinking cap on, Bobby Blaze has got his on, and we're going to do a little digging on some ugly and useless belts in a world of professional wrestling. That's right. Um, yeah, there there is nothing worse than something that is both unattractive and useless, uh, you know, and there have been many titles that have fallen into these categories. But before we get started, um, let's you and I talk for a minute because it is our one-year anniversary. Yes, congratulations, man. You dug us out of me over a year ago. We had talked about it for about four or five months. Mm-hmm. We kind of let things get together, had some ideas. We threw out some ideas. We played with it. I think we recorded three. We, as you said, had them in the can. I think we actually aired last June the 9th or June the 5th. Um, so, yeah, we're one year in, man, and um, I appreciate all the editing you've done. I appreciate all the topics. Uh, thing is, we got a podcast, and we've got fans. Yes. People are listening, so I want to say, hey, if you've been on since day one, man, I'm not going to mention everyone because sure enough, we'll leave someone out. But, man, all you great fans that, that tweet for us, retweet for us, hook us up on Facebook, um, that, you know, follow the YouTube page and all those things, we've come a long way in one year, so congratulations. Congratulations, Professor. Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're right. I mean, we've got this handful of almost fanatical fans out there that have really supported the show. So thank you, guys. You know who you are. Yes. A- again, if we start trying to list you, we're going to leave people out. And rather than hurt somebody's feelings, I'd rather hurt all your feelings that we're all in the <laughs> yeah. same boat together. Exactly. Um, and they do know who they are. Yes, they, they do. A good yeah. handful of really have gotten on board with this program, and we appreciate you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, I thank you guys. I think if you've just started listening recently, thank you as well. Thank you for giving us a shot. Um, but we're not the only people with an anniversary right now. Nope. Let's give a shout out to the hashtag BTT booking a territory to Mike Mills and that gang over there. Hey man, they had just celebrated their four year anniversary of excellent podcast about old school professional wrestling. So booking a territory, Mike and the guys, Harper and Doc. See, I didn't forget their names, Jeremy. I there thought I go. would, but, uh, congratulations guys on your four years. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that is, I mean, four years of podcasting is a lifetime of other entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so congratulations. That is really, really awesome. Um, you know, before we get started, Bobby, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your uh, your writing projects you've done. Yeah, well, you know, we've left them off the last couple of weeks, but, you know, this kind of helps sponsor the show a little bit. You can help us out by... Uh, my books. Uh, you can go to Amazon and get my books. You can go to, I've got Pin Me, Pay Me, and I've also got, uh, shit, what else do I have? I tell you, <laughs> The Education of a Wrestler. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash blazebook1 and get Pin Me, Pay Me, or you can get go to tinyurl.com backslash blazebook2 and get The Education of a Wrestler. Um, I kicked out on two, of course. So, yeah, and uh, at this helps sports a little bit of show there. Uh, Jeremy gets a little bit of kickback from that on the Amazon. I get a little bit of kickback from it on the Amazon. Uh, you know, I sell a book or two, and we all walk away happy. Uh, we all walk away with a smile on our face. And it keeps the podcast going because we, we are, do not have any big – corporate fundraisers or we don't have any big corporate sponsors and we just had our uh you know we had our little um we didn't even ask for much on our our crowdfund we we asked for 350 dollars and we got that and that was enough to carry us through 18 months so we still got about six months left on that uh but every little thing helps so uh, go to amazon and download a book or uh better yet get one in print copy that way jeremy and the show gets a little bit kicked back as well yeah absolutely um you know, and we, we will have to discuss in the future doing Patreon because I've seen some great stuff that's not overly complex that we could do and just like do a dollar or two a month and just have like those two tiers. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that way we're not, you know, pushing real hard, but it's a way to make the show a little more self sustaining. That would be great. Um, but with that being said, you know, again, go buy Pin Me Pay Me 
tinyurl.com slash blazebook1. And I kicked that on to the education of a wrestler, tinyurl, tinyurl.com slash blazebook2. If you've ever wondered what the life, and I'm going to use this term like I use it with actors and everybody else, what a working wrestler's life is like, these books will show you. And, uh, you know, if you've already got them and you got a friend who's into classic wrestling, buy them for your friend. Don't be a cheap ass. Show, <laughs> show a little love. You know, I'm sure your friends have supported you through some shitty times. Buy them this book. Show them you appreciate their care. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, anything else we got to shout out here before we get into our topic? Um, You know what? Not uh, at this time. Not at this time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do. I do want to do. Okay, so we're we're gonna cover the topic now, but I wanna. I have a sidebar as soon as we start the topic that I'm gonna start with it. It, it, it kind of relates and kind of doesn't. So this week we are talking about the ugliest and useless title belts in pro wrestling history. Yes. Um, <laughs> some will be a combination of the two. Some will just be ugly. Some will just be useless. But. Guys, if, if you run an indie fed out there and your title belt is the big gold belt with a little bit of colored uh, enamel paint on it, stop fucking doing that. Oh my God, stop doing that. That your 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 fed does not deserve that belt. <laughs> Yeah. That was a very special belt made for a very special champion. Uh, go get, there's plenty of nice boilerplate belts that will look good, and you can buy, you know, at just about any shop without breaking the bank. Stop using the most recognizable NWA title ever as your bullshit backyard fed belt, please. But now back to our regular programming. Well, with that said, also, if you run an independent promotion, don't try to make your own belt by getting a piece of leather and then a license plate and then going to like Lowe's or Walmart and getting a big eagle door knocker. Oh, yeah. And screwing that to it so it has a big American eagle on it, but it's nothing more than a door <laughs> a door knocker <laughs> on your belt. You can do better than that. We've come a long way on the indie scene, and that's not a dig towards anyone. Not that I've seen that belt. I'm just saying uh, invest in it if you're going to run legitimate out, uh, independent wrestling. You know, get a get it something good, man. Don't copycat and, it, and 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 make something good because there's enough out there that you can do that with. Oh yeah. So yeah. So don't be ugly and don't be useless. I guess. Yeah. Uh, be 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 beautiful and 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 be productive. By God, get a good belt. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. With that said, we're going to talk about some belts that are uh, not so uh, productive looking and not so pretty looking. So or they serve no purpose. I don't know if the belt's going to be productive, but they serve no purpose to some of the some of the federation they represented and again we went with some of the bigger federations on this so if your yeah. if your federation didn't get rec uh, recognized don't worry we'll get you later if you're oh. not insulted yet we'll get you oh yeah yeah we're, we're, we're getting around to you matter of fact let me, yeah. let me bring this one up real quick uh jeff jarrett's other wrestling company the global force wrestling every belt had that slimer green ghostbusters color on it you talk about a shit color for a title belt <laughs> yeah. oh my god you know the only thing worse than that that i can imagine is orange and uh, let's start with orange with number 10 yes taz's ftw title belt yeah, I had to go and look this one up, Jeremy, because I wasn't sure what you was talking about. Because uh, I'm used to seeing FTW in small uh, capital letters or on someone's knuckles. Mm -hmm. I just got out of penitentiary or something. But yep. I, then we start talking, and I looked at it, and I was like, okay, I see where he's going with this. And then Jeremy like, Bobby, fuck the world, get it? I'm like, yeah, I was just about 20 years behind, Jeremy. I did get it. So, yeah, big orange belt. Uh, what did you say? Put some black tape over already existing belt. Yeah, um, the, the the first you one, know, I, well, yeah, the first one was basically the big gold eagle with some uh, yellow tape with block letters where they just wrote FTW on it. There you go. Um, now, in wrestling, there is a tradition of using tape and stickers to repurpose a belt temporarily. But you know, one of my least favorite things that happens in wrestling is when somebody creates a parallel championship for themselves. Oh uh, yeah. And you know, it just you know, it put a title on them. If if it's if they're worth like running a program against the champ. Then give them the number two title. You know that's what is that's what your second tier title is for. You know. Yeah. Work uh, your way up to that title. Yeah. Exactly. So this and look, I I don't mind Taz. I love watching his suplexes. Oh yeah. hell yeah, Taz. This is not a dig towards Taz yeah. whatsoever. He was a big big part of the ECW as we know, and uh, you know end up working in uh, WWE and and has a great show out there from my understanding was podcast on the CBS network. So it's all all due respect to you, Taz. But but the uh, we're 
just talking about the belts, man. Just yeah. talking about the belts. So, so please don't choke us out, Taz. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've wrestled Taz before. About three nights down in Tennessee, he was finishing up in Smoky Mountain when I was coming in. Tremendous performer, man. Tremendous. Oh, yeah. Did, did, you, did, you, did you get hit by his exploder plex? I got hit every damn suplex he wanted to put on me. Because <laughs> that, that is one that looks like that would hurt no matter how prepared you are for it, you know? Uh, he, he took good care of me because we – work and I had been I had been overseas and 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 again I was coming in and and Sandy had said you know some good things uh, about me of course Jimmy had already talked to him and then as in the ring with Mark Curtis you know so yeah and I was over I went over all three nights because he was finishing up and he was going to go to do the big ECW run he was already there but but just not you know hadn't really taken off yet like it did but um so Jimmy is bringing me as a baby face and 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 Taz was leaving as a heel so he understood that so it's strictly business and professional so uh at, with him being a heel and me being the, the new white fresh baby face uh fuck he suplexed me all he wanted you know what i'm saying yeah. but he took care of me man because i could work and he could work and and um we we had some you know pretty good matches i think they was first and second matches on the card you know so it wasn't like we had to go out there and, and and tear the house down but we did have to go out there and get the crowd excited and also you know deliver really good good solid matches and the best of my recollection i can say this i always busted my ass in the ring i know taz was known for busting his ass in the ring and we had mark curtis in there so i'm sure if i look back on all three of the matches they were they were top tier matches for you know first and second matches on a card so yeah, yeah a lot of respect for taz yeah no it's um i like, like taz that belt was ugly and it was kind of worthless because <laughs> all it was yeah. was a way to go like oh i'm i'm the real world champion well if you were the real world champion you'd have that belt and, you know, ROH is doing that right now with a guy, too, running around with a look-alike belt. You know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, enough. Well, let's let's uh, move on. Uh, yeah, enough about that. Um, you got any money? You got any money, money? You got any money, Jeremy? Can we go um, have some money well, for his next belt? Yeah, the thing is, uh, Bobby, you know, everybody has a price. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and everybody also has an ugly belt when they make it themselves. <laughs> um so Ted DiBiase uh, <laughs> comes in the WWE playing the Million Dollar Man. He wants the world title, but nobody will really sell it to him. Or every time he works out a deal to buy it, it doesn't go through. It's kind of like a bad house deal. So he goes and has this monstrosity that looks like a bunch of dollar signs with cubic zirconia made. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that looks like a title belt. That looks like a championship. Uh, yeah. What can you say, man? Uh I guess nowadays you might be able to catch uh, Virgil out there on the uh, independent scene of these uh, Comic Cons and stuff, maybe sitting over there, and he has a replica of that belt. So if you still want to see it, I guess there's one or two still in circulation. I don't know that Ted carries one around, but, um, you know, I think way back in, I guess that was like late 80s, early 90s there when he uh, made that belt. It's just it was a horrendous looking belt, really. Oh, um, it really was. I, I, you know, I, I, part of it, I guess, too, is it's just um, it, it served its purpose for what they was trying to get across. It was supposed to look like that. You know, that's the thing was over the top big. Like you said, everyone has a price, and if I can't win the belt, I'll go out and buy and pay and make my own damn belt. And so it was supposed to be over the top. So, but it is. It's just a horrendous looking friggin' belt. It is in no way a, a, a championship title belt that you'd want to be fighting for. You know, if it were boxing or, or wrestling as it is, or MMA or what have you is just kind of one of those belts that's just too over the top but again we're talking about a time period of, you know uh, late 80s early 90s there when WWF at the time was going well over the top you know oh, yeah. so and his well, character was over the top so. yeah the character was over the top and this is also a time period that had the uh, the king as a title it was getting swapped back and forth yeah <clears throat> but also there's a there, there's a little I think sometimes forgotten piece of history with the uh, million dollar title there was another million dollar champion. Oh. Little, a fella named the Ringmaster. Oh. Steve okay. Austin. Steve Austin. Look at the professor putting yeah. the thinking cap on. Yeah, Steve Austin carried this belt for a couple weeks before uh, DB Austin jumped to WCW. And then they had to quickly scuttle the Ringmaster, which was just. It sounds like a Spider Man villain. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it also sounds like he'd wear a circus top hat. But they had to scuttle his character. <laughs> And uh, that's when the Stone Cold character came about. Yeah, thankfully. And, yeah, thankfully. I mean, you know, one of the one of the probably what four biggest stars ever in wrestling. You know, maybe Absolutely. I mean, an argument can be made the biggest, but you know, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that thing was just that was just a monstrosity. It looked cheap too. 
Yes. You know, I, I, again, I think it's part of with the, uh, I don't uh, uh, that F word, uh, the mm-hmm. diamonds, you know, I yep. mean, it's, you know, so yeah. Um, and I see something here. I don't know if this is true or not. Said it cost around $40,000 to make, but I, I, I dare say it might cost closer to 400 to make. <laughs> well, you know, I don't so, know. I don't know what brass and cubic zirconia were going for back then. Yeah. So yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who, who knows? knows? Who knows? All right. So that's number nine, the yep. million dollar belt. Uh, okay. Number eight, we're going to dig a little bit on the divas. The butterfly belt that the divas wear, uh, a couple of different colors with it. I'm not a fan of it. I'm just going to tell you. I'm a fan of the divas. I like seeing something around their waist. You know, they got their own division, and, and those women that are the women's championship now has come a long way from just the divas to to what uh, uh, talking pantyhose or panty and bra matches, yeah, and just being out there looking good to where the girls and, and prof- women professional wrestlers now uh, they've come to where they have a women's division as we've seen you know this past year in WrestleMania of course this come so so far that you know they actually have some really good looking you know championship women's championship belts but that divas belt that that butterfly that's just it was just too womanly too over the top it's almost like the million dollar belt it's just like ah eh, it's goggly you know it's it's i, I don't know I, I, I didn't like it i didn't like yeah. it. it didn't even look comfortable uh when the ladies wore it and and i'm not saying it didn't look sexy on a few of them because i'm sure it did but um out of, it just looked uncomfortable. It just looked like, eh, we're just putting this on these girls that are in these bra and panty matches. And I don't mean that disrespectful in any way, because like I said, we know that that division has taken off now. You know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But the belt, um, uh, the belt, eh, he well, adds. if I remember right, the, the belt came in both color choices of pink and purple, the only colors that women can wear, apparently. Okay. Um, yeah, it looked like a giant butterfly. It had a bunch of irregular shapes and something that looked super pokey at the top, which never made makes sense to me um it looks like i don't know it looks like a remember in the early 2000s when like pants were bedazzled and that's how they sold them with like <laughs> just shit just like glued to the pockets and <laughs> i can remember where you can order your own bedazzler at late night tv yeah. and bedazzle your own pants <laughs> well yeah, but we but we remember that because neither one of us sleep worth of shit so you know, exactly yeah, yeah. So we could bedazzle a belt, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, but yeah, I didn't like that rugged-looking edge at the top, either. I don't oh, like no. that. It looks like it just cut into your stomach. Of course, those girls don't have any. They're little flat stomachs. Uh, you know, I'd have to... I couldn't wear one of those, but I'm not a diva. What are you going to say? Yeah, you know? exactly. And this, this comes from the era when nobody wore their belt anyways. Everybody carried it on their shoulder. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. You, know, and there's, and, you know, there's a thing about belts, and I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again right now. A, a title belt should look like a prize you want to fight for. Yes. That I mean, plain and simple, that's that's what it should be. You know, it is a yes. prize that you want to earn. And I'm going to say this, just uh, in case we have any new listeners, it is a belt. It's it it is a strap. It's something you do wear. It you can call it a title if you're in a title match for the belt. You're fighting for the belt people mm-hmm. you're not fighting for the title you know you can call it what you want but in in our world it's a fucking belt whether it be a woman's belt a junior weight belt a world title belt uh, you know it's a belt you know it's not just a title uh, that just that may have different meanings to different people but in our world we are calling these championship belts and uh-huh. we're talking about the ugliest and the useless belts in the world of professional wrestling. So we're not talking about titles. We're talking about real belts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So, Bobby, let's uh, let's drop back and punt here real quick. Okay, and, yeah. And, um, you know, let's tell everybody. Um, why don't you tell them about our YouTube page? Yeah, so Tex, uh, Tex Johnson out there, our graphics man, our man down in the Buller Room, hanging out down there with Mick Foley. He does our YouTube page, and if you go to tinyurl.com backslash BBBB video, you'll see some really, really unique and very good quality videos on our YouTube channel. So go to YouTube, type in tinyurl.com BBBB video. He's put up about three this week, and he's done the, uh, we've got the most legit badasses. Uh, Paul Orndorff has like over 155,000 views. Ming has over like 105,000 views. Uh, uh, Alondra Blaze has, I think, 
oh, 15,000 views. Um, and then right behind her is Missy Hyatt. But what I was going to say, this week, Tex put up about three more of our BR Valentines and Most Influential Women in Wrestling. And we're up to number two. And I really like it because I'll let Jeremy tell you how Tex kind of does this because on this week's one, you'll hear a lot of Jeremy. And uh, because... The number two was Missy Hyatt. Oh, Missy and, Hyatt. And so when you see it, and you'll hear Jeremy talking. Tell me a little bit about your uh, Missy Hyatt there, Jeremy. Well, and why don't you go and watch this on tinyurl.com <laughs> backslash BBBB video. Yeah, well, Missy Hyatt was uh, the woman on uh, UWF and NWA TV right as I entered my teen years, my, uh, yes. my pubescent years. Maybe she even caused me to enter puberty a year early. It's hard to say. <laughs> 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 but at the time, a lot of women in wrestling were a little rough looking, and Missy did not look rough. And Jeremy's voice is on this video. Mine's on her, but Jeremy <laughs> Tex done a really good job with this one. And it's just our voices. What he does, he takes you know uh, little out uh, bites, I guess you call them, a uh, little bits from our show, and he puts some video footage to him. He done a, he done a good job on all these. But this week when I got there was like three of them, but the one I watched most recent was Missy, and I got a little kick out of it because there's Jeremy saying a lot of good things <laughs> all about Missy, man, and it's it's pretty good this one's gonna get a lot of views but uh yeah we got a youtube channel tex does it from down there in a the boiler room and just hit us up on it at tinyurl.com backslash bb bb video and it'll take you right to it be sure and give us a thumbs up or a like also subscribe to it we are almost at 4500 subscribers and we appreciate that very much tell a friend you know hey if they like old school wrestling i just told a guy yesterday go to that youtube channel and watch a couple of those because he was talking about uh, not to get too far off track. He was talking about what a talent <laughs> Barry Wyndham was. And I oh, said, yeah. You got to go and watch. You got to go and watch the video that we had when we talked about Buddy and Barry. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. But, um, yeah, tell a friend, retweet it, send it out. Um, thumbs up it, subscribe, whatever you got to do, man. You'll enjoy it. If you like this show, you'll like what Tex does with our voices, with the uh, background and the music and, and the eye candy this week, especially with Missy Hyatt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Missy yes. Hyatt, yeah. Well, yeah. I've probably I've probably filled five hours of talk, talking about her on this show already. So <laughs> uh, We better move on back yeah. to our most ugliest and useless titles, <laughs> uh, belts in the world of professional wrestling and again you're listening to episode 44 with jeremy the professor vilmer and bobby blaze and you can find us both on twitter you can find jeremy at the geekish cast you can find me at bobby blaze 744 and you can find us both together on uh, bell to bell blaze and that's our uh, dual page on twitter there's also a uh, mentioned youtube and there's also a facebook group so we were easy to find just find us and uh, tune in to uh, let us know what you think about the ugliest and most useless belts you can always use the hashtag bbbb and it'll bring us up uh, let us kind of see what What's going on when you send in some submissions? And all these guys, all these uh, belts did come from submissions from several different people. I kind of can uh, put a conduced, condensed them down to about 15 or 20 like we always do. Jeremy had about five of his. I had about five of mine. We kind of mixed them up for everyone else's, and this is how we got our list. With that said, we need to move on to number seven, Jeremy. Oh, number seven. Yeah, let me let me let me preface this a little bit. Okay, <laughs> um, you got to go back and look at where TNA wrestling was at this point before you know before uh, Anthem bottom and kind of you know revitalized it into Impact and started f fixing it. Um, TNA was the star fucker of wrestling companies. <laughs> <laughs> TNA. TNA. How you really feel, <laughs> Yeah, TNA wrestling was the ring rat of wrestling companies. <laughs> <laughs> they they would they would just drop to their knees for any former WWE wrestler and give them whatever the fuck they wanted. And the Jeff Hardy TNA title belt is the perfect visualization of the stupid lengths they would go to to grab even somebody who got fired for multiple drug violations and it uh. probably wasn't a good idea to keep them running. This thing somehow looked like a Decepticon mixed with the Devil, Divas title mixed with an acid trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it right now, man. I can't help but laugh. Yeah. Uh, uh, that And see, again, that is not something I would want to fight for to win. 
You know, it's just, I, I would have no interest. I'd be like, you know what, I'll give you a match. Or if you're giving me a match, that's fine. I'm going to try to win. But I don't give a fuck about winning that, that, that particular belt you got, you yeah. know. And um, I think, it's I even think got were... the big looking earrings on it, you know, with the spreaders, uh, the spreaders. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm not into that, but I mean, if you are at your thing, that's cool. But I mean, it's got TNA wrestling. It's got the, you know, spreaders on it. It's got the lip pierce. that looks like it's just, it's just, it's a monstrosity of a fucking belt. It's a motherfucker belt that I wouldn't want. Oh yeah. And I think there were three, I think there were three different versions of it and they, oh, okay. and they were all ugly as sin. Um, <laughs> you know, and also it's that thing about the shape. You don't want sharp jagged edges on shit you're going to have around your waist. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I see the other one. One of them does a really sharp looking jagger looking up to the top of the forehead yeah. there to go right into your stomach. Man. Oh, yeah. If you flat abs or not, you're poking yourself with that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. I used to have a, a bat, you know, a Batman bat symbol uh, belt buckle. I wore yeah. it once and then I threw it away because my stomach was <laughs> beat to shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, man. <laughs> that was number seven. I think we browbeat that one to death. Let's move on to another belt. Let's jump, uh, shift gears here to number six, to the WCW Hardcore Belt. And I know you have a little bit of oh. thing to say about the Hardcore at this point, but this is back when World Championship Wrestling decided to have the Hardcore Division. And I was back there in those days, and I wasn't a contender to be in a Hardcore Division. In fact, I was on my way out when, when they started doing some of those matches. Some of the guys that had the matches were so talented in wrestling, they probably shouldn't have been... Um, in, in those type of matches. But with that said, I understand why they were because of the uh, climate and the uh, atmosphere that was taking place at that time. Everyone's just trying to basically hold on to a job with a fucking company that was, you know, just going every which direction they could. But um, they come out this hardcore belt, man, and it just... I'll let you finish up, Jeremy. Well, just, uh, I just know a shove one crutches are involved and it just... I don't know, it's hardcore belt. What you do? All right, well, so... It's, okay, so... You can say whatever you want about hardcore wrestling, whether it was good or bad or garbage wrestling or whatever you want to call it. That's fine. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, there were things about it I liked because, you know what, ECW had a lot of, of hardcore garbage style wrestling. But you know what? They also had Malenko and Benoit and uh, uh, just uh, Lynn, Jerry Lynn. Yep. Fantastic wrestlers who worked in that. To me, when you just have a hardcore title, that's that's a gimmick. That's not even a thing. You know, it, your, right. your wrestling company is either a hardcore company or it's not. So they had two different versions of this belt. I don't remember what order they went in, but I know each one was even uglier than the other one somehow. <laughs> the one thing that was awesome that they did, though, Bobby, and this is about a friend of yours, uh, Norman Smiley. Yes. When they put the, okay, but I get people don't like stupid humor in wrestling sometimes. Norman Smiley as hardcore champ was fucking hilarious. I mean, yes. accidentally screaming your way and falling down slapstick style to a win week after week was incredible. And coming out wearing like football pads, <laughs> just everything yeah. about Norman's, everything about his uh, hardcore title reign was outstanding. Yes. And I, I, I figured you was going to say that. And we didn't even talk about that in yeah. post-production. And that's one of the things about, that's what I was getting at. Some of the guys... Norman is such a tremendous talent, can wrestle, had wrestled all over the world, and of course now he's working with developmental uh, in some capacity with WWE, and that's great because he's a first-class dude, man. But I'm going to tell you, it's one of those things where you're like, why in the world do they put him in a hardcore title when he can go out here and have all these matches with, with your Malenkos, your Benoits, and with the big guys too. But again, it was the climate, the, the backstage atmosphere and what they wanted you to do. And, and you know, like I said, people were just glad to be getting a paycheck oh, at yeah. some point there. But yeah, he was, uh, he would come out. I remember the one when you mentioned the football pads and he'd act all scared, and this and that, and the, the screaming. And it was just, it's just hilarious. So, you, and, and that's one way. Um, here we are talking about 20 some odd years later. We're talking about ugly title. Uh, was it useless too? Maybe. But the thing was, he got it over. Yeah. That's the whole thing. When someone puts something, um, and I don't want to get too far off base, but it's one of those things where they say, you know what, here's what we're going to do with this. And you're like, oh, fuck, this is just such a terrible idea. Uh, they're wasting my talent, or they're, they're wasting some of the, ta the most talented guys here, putting them in this division. But the thing is, he got it over. And that's, that's what the business is. Is getting your gimmick over or getting that gimmick over. And in this case, that gimmick was that belt or the belt was the gimmick and Norman did get it over. So, so yeah, back to on track though, 
the belt itself, eh, like you said, one was uglier and the other was uglier. Yep. So, but he got it over. He got the he got it over. Oh God! I mean, that's that. Both of those belts look like polywogs splattered against a mud <laughs> fence, man. I just. <laughs> Oh right. shit! Okay, well let's um, um let's uh, yeah. let's let's pay some bills real quick, and then we'll keep moving here. Hey, Bobby, okay. yes. Bobby, how do you feel about Amazon Prime? I like Amazon Prime, man. I do. I like to order books, and I get free shipping. And I order little things all the time, and I get free shipping. I get two day delivery, and now I'm in a position where I got some one day delivery, and that's real good. And it's free. The shipping was free because I am a Prime member, and I also like their streaming services. So don't twist my arm. Don't get me in a hammerlock. Just get me Prime, man. And one way you can do that is. Get Go to tinyurl.com backslash BB try prime. Take over, Jeremy. Well, yeah, that's uh, so I watch, I haven't had cable in 10 years. I watch a lot of streaming services and that sort of thing. Amazon Prime is developing a lot of great original content, but they also have great content from around the world. Like one of my favorite TV series, Corner Gas, it's a Canadian series. Hardly mm -hmm. any Americans have seen it. It's all available on, on Amazon. It's in, trust me, guys, if you have never seen this show and you like sitcom-style comedies, you want to check it out. It is hilarious. Um, you know, the original Star Trek, or actually all Star Trek, it's available on there. So, I mean, all your nerdy bests are available through Amazon Prime. And like Bobby was saying, you also get the free shipping, which Amazon is currently updating to one-day shipping. Yes. And uh, so you're going to be able to get stuff almost immediately when you buy through Amazon Prime. And right now, you can try it for 30 days free. Bobby, why don't you give them that address again? Yes, it's tinyurl.com backslash BB try prime and you have nothing to lose just go on there sign up the show gets a little bit of a kickback try it for 30 days if you don't like it it doesn't cost you a dime you can cancel but i bet you'll just about you'll love it i'm telling you tinyurl.com backslash bb try prime and, and give the show a little bit of a kickback and also give yourself a treat i think i mentioned too I, i'm a movie guy about three or four weeks ago i ordered um uh, Raging Bull, it came in. I got it within two days. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I text Jeremy on a Saturday. I was sitting here doing nothing except for having a couple beers, and I pulled up Barbarossa. Can oh, we mention that on the podcast? Fantastic but movie. This past Tuesday, I pulled up another oldie. I, I've already seen the remake of it, and that's fine and dandy, blah, blah, blah. But I'm an old school guy. I went and watched The Mechanic, man, with Charles Bronson and Jan Michael Vincent. I watched The Original Mechanic this past Tuesday on Prime. I I didn't pay a dime, man, you know, because I've already got the Prime. Yep. I just I just downloaded it, and it's right there in my living room for two hours. I'm sitting there. I'm having a cup of beers. I'm watching a movie from, like, 1972, 73, and I'm enjoying the fuck out of it, man. Oh, and yeah. some of those movies don't date themselves. You know, that was one that's just timeless. <laughs> and so I find old movies on there all the time. In addition to, uh, I, I'm waiting for season three for the uh, uh, – um, Shit, the amaze. Uh, what is her name? Mar uh, Marvelous Miss Marzell. Marvelous Miss Marzell. That is a great fucking comedy about comics, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm looking forward to that. I have watched um, the show. I watched one episode of the show you keep recommended. I will get back to that. I was just waiting late. I said I'm gonna try that, and uh, I'll get caught up on that too. Uh, what's the name of gasoline? What uh, you say? Corner, corner gas. Corner gas. I yeah. watched one episode, and um, I'll be a man of my word, and I'll watch a few more. And, Oh, yeah. I get into that, Jeremy, so some, thanks for turning me on to that. Yeah, some of the best writing on TV in the last 15 or 20 years right there. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm kind of friends with a handful of people that are involved in that show. But Yeah, yeah. And I knew you were. That's yeah. good. Well, good I, you. But, I, but I became friends with them because of that show. So you There know. you go. Hey, Bobby, you know what else I just yes. did? Uh, just, just to kind of celebrate the opposite of what we're talking about this week, I just uh, went and looked at that book called Big Gold, A Close Look at Pro Wrestling's Most Celebrated Championship Belt. Talking about the Ric Flair Big Gold NWA slash WCW Heavyweight Title. Okay. And uh, if our listeners are interested in checking that book out, they can go to tinyurl.com slash BB Big Gold Belt. All right. Yeah. It's um it, it's it, it it is one of the most in depth books about a title belt you'll ever read. There's also another one about the uh, the Dome Globe NWA Title. Okay. Um, but we'll do that when we do maybe most prominent world titles or something later on. So. Okay. So B. BB Big Gold Belt. That's right. So, you know, if you're interested in learning about the Big Gold, go check that out. But um, 
we got a show to wrap up, so let's yes. uh, let's Head move on number to number five. Yeah, number five. Okay, uh, I think we both wanted this on this list. I think it comes in at the really appropriate place here. Um, I had forgotten who one of the, ch- the champions was that held it until you refreshed my memory at last week and again this week. But I'm talking about the Western States Championship belt, and I know Jeremy hates that belt, and it was wore by. Um, there's a Bisco who I was drawing a blank on, and uh, Big Barry, Barry Wyndham, man. Oh, yeah. So uh, tell us about why you hate that belt, and also this comes into the useless uh, part, too, when we talked about these belts. Yeah, you know, I'm not even going to go as far as saying this one was necessarily ugly. It was black and red and gold, which is kind of, I don't know, kind of garish, but not horrible. I've seen good belts right. in the color scheme. <clears throat> let's let's, let's um, break it down a little bit, though. Okay, so they want to celebrate Barry Windham. Look, Barry Windham should have had a title. But you know what you do to a guy who should have a title? You give him a title with a fucking lineage. <laughs> you give him a title with a history. You don't go, hey, here's some shit I just made up for you. Yeah. Secondly, you know where WCW slash the NWA never really caught on? <laughs> West of the Mississippi. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, yeah, there were there were matches and stuff, but it wasn't like they had a strong foothold west of the Mississippi. So, <laughs> western states. Okay, well, I, yes. I, I guess back in the day, pre Roy Shire or somebody, somebody had a western states title. I don't know where it was. Um, yeah. So then they throw another word on there just to convolute this son of a bitch even more: western states heritage title. Oh <laughs> shit! All right. Yeah, some history to it, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now they decide that, hey, you know what that belt we created just for Barry? Let's have Barry drop it to somebody. Who should we give it to? How about that guy from Minnesota, Larry Zabisco? <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Hey, where 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 should Larry win the Western States Heritage title? Oh, how about New York State? Oh, yeah. Is it going to be West New York State? Nope, it's going to be the eastern part of New York State. Oh, shit. Okay. So, so now we got... The Western States Heritage title, no longer worn by the guy it was created for. They give it to Zabisco. Now, I love Barry Windham. I love Larry Zabisco. I think they're yes. both great. Um, Absolutely. So, but here's the thing. <laughs> you know, you're looking at a time when wrestling companies are falling like dominoes, right? And, and you look at the guy and you're like, hey, here's this title we created. We're going to try to give it some prestige. Let's um, let's give it to Vern Gagne's uh, son-in-law. <laughs> Right when Vern Gagne is going to need Larry to come back and be world champion over there. That that sounds like a fantastic idea, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah Bobby, stick around this business oh, 15 God. minutes, it'll change. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but just just everything about this belt, two people held it. it just, why didn't they give him the national title or something? You know, if you uh, you want to give Barry Windham a title, give him a good title. I agree. Yeah. I know? agree, man. Go dig, up, <laughs> go dig up a Texas title that's been defunct for a little while. Give him that. There you go. Yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Hell, we should be booking somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> well, you know what? Oh no, you know what I like? I like I like what? armchair booking because nobody can go back and criticize me later when the show doesn't pull good ratings. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, booking is tough, man. Oh yeah. No, I. <laughs> so, it's easy for me to have an opinion when my paycheck doesn't depend on it. Right on. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on, man. Right along our list into our top three. Let's do this. Oh no! no. Wait, wait. Go. We're skipping number four. Let's get number four yeah, first. Number four. Yeah. I was, I was going to go back. I'm sorry. Number 10 was Taz's FTW ECW belt. Number 9 was a million dollar belt, DiBiase. The Divas Butterfly belt. The Hardy TNA belt. The WCW Hardcore belt. And now we just had the Western States Heritage Championship belt, which wasn't all that ugly. We admittedly say that, but it was fucking pretty useless, as Jeremy just explained to you. And we're going to four here. And um, I think we put these in a proper order. I was looking right at it when I said three, because I had it in my mind we were going to switch three and four, mm-hmm. and it could have been interchangeable, but I didn't switch it on my paper. And so tell them what number four was, please. You know, and I don't even think we should distinguish here. I'm going to say, I mean, you've got okay. it written down as Cena's spinner belt, yeah. but I'm going to say U.S. and world, because they were both ugly and stupid belts. Yeah, yeah. What um, the fuck is that? Bling bling or something? Oh, I don't know. yeah, you know, I mean... It would have been one thing if just Cena had used them while he was doing his white boy rapper gimmick. Right. But they were made the official belts. And they yeah. were, they were, they weren't just ugly. They were fugly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they I were, don't know. I'm with you. If it would just been Cena only, 
uh, while he done it, you know, his rap gimmick type deal, and there's no disrespect to scene or anything. It, if anything, that added to his part of his character, mm-hmm. but should have been recognized as, a, as one of the, you know, main title belts, and then other people wear it, and this and that. No. And it was fucking ugly, like you said. So oh, that's yeah. why it makes our list, man. The spinner belt. I, a belt shouldn't fucking spin around. A belt nope. should be something you're fucking fighting for to win. And, uh, you know, just, you, let the guy, when he wins the belt, go out and buy some bling bling and wear mm-hmm. some fucking like, gold necklaces and bracelets and earrings and what have you. But you don't want that shit spinning around. Go buy you some fucking spinners on your car and drive it down the street for all I fucking care. But don't put it on your title belt, you know? Yeah. It's just, so, yeah, yeah. It just, it was not a good look. No. So that's all I got to say about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to number three. Yes. Um,. All right, so this is the first title belt I ever saw, and I was glad they got rid of it pretty quickly after I saw it. Uh, it's going to be the big green belt that Bob Backlund lost to the Sheik, that the Sheik lost to Hogan. Um, it was garish. It was green. Mm-hmm. The, the etching on the plate wasn't very deep, so you couldn't quite see it. And, yeah. then, and then the side plates were the names and reigns of the previous champions. I don't know how far back, but there were a ton of them on there, so I assume... Yeah. I assume all the way back to the founding of the WWF title. That's what I'm thinking. Like you said, though, you have to really find a good image of it because the etching isn't very deep, uh, you know, to 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 get a good cutout or a good look at it on those side plates. And then the color, you're like, I'm not sh- I'm not sure why it's not black or. Well, any other color besides green, you mm-hmm. know, um, I'm not really sure what the thinking was on that. Um, I washed the product at that time like you did, and it's one of those things where you're like, thankfully, it, once he, uh, Backlund dropped it to the Sheik, and the Sheik dropped it to Hogan, et cetera, we got some changes real quick, thankfully, yeah. during that time. But I guess Backlund had worn that thing. I know he was champion there for like five years, so I don't know how, maybe since 78 he had worn that. If, and, and I'm not sure who wore it before him as far as – Superstar had it, or or Bruno had it, or you know how long it had been in existence up there. So I'm not going to bullshit my way through any history, but I'm just not sure why you make a title belt green. Is yeah, that just to go against the grain or whatever, being different WWF or whatever, you know. So, but yeah, they got rid of it eventually. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I I can't figure out. I can't figure out. I mean, I I don't want to disrespect whoever like made, designed and made the title. I, oh I don't, no, yeah. No. yeah. I don't know who it was. It just, it seems like, I don't know, it looks like a belt designed by a committee. You know, yeah. it just, oh, God damn. It's like, put this on here, put that on here. Yeah. You know. Oh, God, it's just garish. I mean, just in so many ways. But you know what? I've seen an uglier belt, Bobby. Uh, I, really? Yes, I have. I wonder, wonder who wore one uglier than that. Well, I, I know a couple people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I would tell you that it was Austin Idol, but I'm afraid he'd pop my head like a zit. So, <laughs> so you're going to say Jerry the King so Lawler? I'm going to say Jerry Lawler. Yeah, and that is the oh CWA Continental Wrestling Association, the license plate belt. That'd probably be one of my top picks if something hadn't happened here recently. But we'll get into that in just a minute. And I'm with you. Hey, I've wrestled Lawler. Uh, I had the honor of uh, meeting um, Austin Idol for the first time ever just a couple of summers back, and that was pretty cool and all. But um, yeah, I wouldn't want to disrespect either one of the men wearing the belt. But I'll tell you this: the belt looked fucking like it's made down here in uh, Eddysville State Prison in Kentucky. I have a license plate, and they said, here, put this on here. They've got like a uh, part of a, a Canadian flag, United States flag, Puerto Rican flag, uh, an Italian flag, I guess, and then it's got some lions, and I, I can't make out too much of it. It's just a big-ass thick belt all the way around. It doesn't really taper too much other than it looks like a license plate in the center, um, with two smaller license plates as your sidebars, yep. uh, it is at least on you know some leather with some buckles, you know. But it's it's a terrible, terrible looking belt, and I know uh, Lawler wore that belt around for a long time. Oh yeah, it's so, yeah. I just I can't the the flags on it are wrong. I mean the Canadian yeah. flag is is wrong. The um, I don't know. Is that supposed to be the Australian or the New Zealand flag? It's not right. Yeah, I, I looked at them too. One of them's Puerto Rican. I can't tell if it's right. Yeah. I mean, it's 
And one of them looks like the Japanese. The, they may have got it right, but it looks like the uh, the the red <laughs> is the flag part, and the white is in the middle. If that's supposed to represent Japan or not, I don't really know because it'd be just the opposite. You'd have the white on the edges and a red in the center, but I don't know. Yeah. What they with it. So I don't know, man. It's but just... it is considered a world heavyweight champion, is what it says on it. Continental Wrestling Association's world heavyweight champion, and that is the title at Lawler one uh, from. My Idol, so go figure, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I would, I would assume that's about the time they pulled away from the AWA. Then, yeah, yeah, I think so. And I would probably have that because that's you know growing up watching that area and watching that era of wrestling. Uh, I'd probably have that as my number one belt. Thinking back, because you brought it up before, and um, you also had refreshed my memory on that Western Heritage belt. So I appreciate that because you are a professor. But something happened here recently oh. that, that made me say, you know, this has kind of propelled us to have this list come up as it did, and that is the new Waffle House Championship belt, mm-hmm. the uh, WW. E 24 seven belt that they just came out with. Uh, that may be the ugliest belt that's come out here recently. And we had talked a little bit beforehand. Um, I just think it's ugly and I think it may even be useless, but I'm gonna let you exaggerate a little bit more about that. If you don't care. Well, you know, this is okay. So this, this belt is a circular plate that says 24 seven. This, this thing that the WWE is doing now where their belts look like a class ring is just, I don't know, just ridiculous to me. Again, they don't look like a prize people are fighting over. Right. <laughs> so it's got the worst aspects of the new uh, title belts, but it's also on a big green round leather strap like the old big gold belt, so that's ugly. And then it's got like the worst elements of the WWE hardcore 24-7 title rules, um, as I understand it anyhow. This thing is like three terrible titles got together <laughs> and had a baby. And it just created one terrible title out of all of them. Yeah. Oh, it is. I mean, it's ugly. It seems worth. I mean, maybe they'll find a way to creatively use it. But just looking at it from its launch, it just yeah. looks terrible. And I feel bad for Mick Foley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, they trot him out to display this thing. And he's got a, you know, look, he's a champ, man. He's He's a fucking trooper. He's gonna oh, do yeah. it, yeah. But yeah, like like Corny says, and I've I've done uh, Mick come through Smokey when I was there. I've done appearances with him. One of the most nicest guys ever, man. And he's willing to do anything to help other people out too. And also, he likes collecting a paycheck, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but yeah, nothing against Mick Foley by any means. But this this belt that he had to go out there and present, man, it is just oh that the side plates are just like blah like they've been scratched or something out i don't know what the, mm-hmm. the wwe at the top and champion and 24 slash seven what i think what they did here is they missed putting 365 on a damn thing they need to put 24 7 365 uh so you can defend that thing every fucking day of the year not just 24 not just seven days a week 24 hours a day you know yeah but anyway uh that to us that's our number one that we had talked about and it, it, some of these could have been interchangeable like we always talk about but we had a lot of fans hit us up with the hashtag bbbb some people inboxed or direct messaged me and we just kind of compiled all of them we came Came up with this top 10 and we hope you like this top 10 but number one uh just here recently revealed the 24 7 hardcore title belt that's out there now in a wwe oh yeah and, and here's the thing i know the wwe can make nice looking belts so look at that nxt north american championship yeah. that is a nice looking belt um you know and then there's other belts like you know i i, I could just go down a list of belts that could have been on here the, oh, yeah. The WWF Canadian title, the WWF European title. Look, if you're not doing shows in Europe all the time, you don't need a European title. Right. Yeah. Right. If uh, Dino Bravo is your only Canadian guy, you, you know, he doesn't need to yeah. be a champion. Sergeant Slaughter's America's title or whatever he carried around. It was just basically a red, white, and blue bobble for Sergeant Slaughter to have at the AWA. Yeah. The, so, yeah. Oh, I was going to say my other one, one of my least favorites from the past is the AWA Bare Knuckles Champion. Oh, God. Mm. Just pointless, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Especially back, or not Bare Knuckle, uh, Brass Knuckle. 
Yeah, I know what you meant. Brass yeah. knuckle, yes. And, and back in the days when that title was around, brass knuckles were a felony in like 48 states. Yeah, so, that's why you had those special matches. Yeah. So uh, that's why Malenko was a brass knuckles champion in Texas and Florida back when they had those kind of matches. Ronnie Garvin, hands of stone, back when they had those kind of matches. And it meant something. You built up, like we talked about, our cage matches and your gimmick matches. Things build up for a reason. And also because uh, just like the move, the pile driver was outlawed in different uh, promotions. Brass Knuckles had been outlawed in states legally, you know, so that's the thing. It was a gimmick to do, but it's not the thing you need to have a title for or a belt for, I should say. Yeah. Anyway, that that's our top 10 belts. There could have been another 10 on there, probably another 20 on there of the most ugliest and most useless belts in professional wrestling and at that jeremy i'm just going to say so long wrestling fans and i'll see you next week or talk to you next week and i'm glad to be back here with the professor jeremy vilmer one more time on a bell to bell with bobby blaze podcast all right everybody it has been our pleasure to have you it's been your pleasure to listen to bell to bell with bobby blaze we'll see you all next week thanks for listening to bell to bell with bobby blaze you can follow the show on twitter at bell to bell blaze you can also follow Bobby on Twitter at BobbyBlaze744 and Jeremy on Twitter at the Geekish Cast. To purchase one of Bobby's books, you can visit tinyurl.com slash blazebook1 to purchase Pin Me, Pay Me, Have Boots, Will Travel. And you can visit tinyurl.com slash blazebook2 to get I Kicked Out on 2, The Education of a Wrestler. To donate to the show's podcast hosting fees, you can visit gofundme.com slash bell to bell podcast hosting fees be sure to include a hyphen in every word in bell to bell podcast hosting fees if you follow and listen to the show on apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star review be sure to share the show with any wrestling fan you may know and get on the facebook page where you can keep up with bell to bell fans just like you again thanks for listening to the program and look for the show again next time